Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be looking at quirks, nuances, little actions that your character can take during the game to make your character just that much more unique. Now, what do I mean by quirks or nuances? I mean by certain actions which characters repeat over and over again, but not to excess. Because otherwise, all that happens is that becomes very, very distracting. So what we want to look at is we want to look for something that the characters would do and a reason why they would do it, a logical, narrative, story-based, historical reason for why they might do something. And then we want to bring it into the character to add flavor and also to create a certain preparatory sense of tension for the other players sitting around the table. So that whenever your character does a certain something or acts in a certain way, those players realize it's a cue that that character is about to start doing what they traditionally do after their said little action. So a quirk could be pushing glasses up onto one's bridge of one's nose. That's a habit I picked up many, many, many years ago, and I find that even when I don't have my glasses on, periodically I'll stab myself in the forehead because, well, muscle memory. Now, it doesn't have to be something like that. It could be the starship captain who tugs on his uniform as he stands up, literally now known as the Picard tug in Star Trek. Patrick Stewart, the actor, got so used to pulling his uniform down as he stood up from the captain's chair that it became his signature maneuver. William Shatner in Star Trek, his signature was speaking in a very staccato way and waiting dramatically for moments of inappropriateness to speak for whatever reason. He doesn't all normally speak like that, but it was at the beginning of his career. So that became his kind of thing. It doesn't have to be the way the character speaks. It doesn't have to be the way they adjust their uniform or how they adjust their spectacles. It could be a saying. Now, something that I've noticed is that when we play in fantasy games, for example, we generally miss out on the opportunity of having our characters being particularly devout. There are a few players that I've come across where they have a character who might be a warrior or a thief, and they've listed the name of a god on the character sheet but it doesn't ever influence the way they play. There's never a, oh, by brax, I hope that we manage to succeed. And yet, by simply bringing in the fact that the character refers to their chosen god, Brax in this case, from my home-brewed system of Braxia, it starts to create more to the character. It makes them feel more real. So let's look at the different types of quirks that you can incorporate into your character and how and what sort of efficacy they have in terms of building that character. So the very first one, of course, is some kind of utterance. This could be a subtle, quiet prayer to the gods. It could be some kind of saying, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. I'm prepared to die. Uh, something along those lines. It could be some kind of phrase that the character says. I've got a bad feeling about this. If you work in some kind of phrase, you don't want to, again, overuse it, maybe once an adventure or so. Perhaps it could be some kind of self-psyching type of um, saying. You got this. All right, remember it's ume before octe when doing the spells. <laughs> Ume octe, ume octe, ume octe. Something along those lines. And prepare to have a reason for why they say it. When did they start saying it? Are they even aware that they say it? We had a wonderful thing happening in our office. Uh, after a couple of years, we all got given coffee mugs with our sayings on them. And um, I discovered that my coffee mug had been branded with the saying and so forth and so on. Because generally speaking, I expect people to be able to carry on with the idea and so forth and so on. Just keep on extrapolating what you, you know the process. You're not an idiot. Just carry on and so forth. I realized that that was something that I had fallen back on saying quite often and uh, pick up, picked up the cue and stopped doing it. I started to look for different ways or actually continuing the idea that I had in my head to the betterment of myself and my colleagues. Bringing a quirk to the character, though, is something that makes the character memorable. 
So you can use some kind of verbal cue. Now what this can do for your characters, it reinforces a particular saying for that character. It becomes a catchphrase if you like. We love catchphrases. They were replete in the uh, 70s, the 80s, the 90s, I'll be back and all those kind of wonderful things. So it creates a very memorable verbal trigger which the rest of your party will uh, naturally pick up on. Something like Kawabunga, uh, for example, from the 80s, was then later changed to Chimichanga, etc., 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 etc. So verbal is a very easy way of doing it, and you can write it at the top of your character sheet and bingo, off you go. Another one which might be a little bit less subtle, but which certainly can create a sense of, of character very quickly, is a favoured item or object that the character must have before something can continue. I had one player, a wonderful role player, she uh, had a paladin, and the paladin would only engage in combat if she was wearing her fighting leathers. And I think I've spoken about her before, such an impression it gave me that she had fighting leathers, and she couldn't talk to you if she had her fighting leathers on. So if you wanted to talk, she had to take her fighting leathers off and put her talking leathers on. Or her drinking leathers. Or her sexing leathers. She had different outfits for each of the incidents that she was about to participate in. And literally combat ground to a halt because this paladin was screaming, Wait, I'm not wearing my fighting leathers. Don't anybody move. I'll come back. And she'd run off and change out of the one bodice and into the other piece of plate mail or whatever it was that she was wearing and she'd come out, all right, I've got them on, we can carry on fighting now. And she'd run in and she'd launch into, into combat. So that object became very important. And what happened was the players, and this was just in one session, so that's how powerful it was. It was a six hour session at a convention, but it, it, it became such a powerful thing that they would say, have you got your fighting leathers with you? Oh, I've got them. And what about your talking leather? Oh, I've got those packed too. And what about your... Oh, do you think we're going to have a sexing leather moment? Oh, I'm, I'll pack those. I didn't think it might happen. Oh, saucy. So the characters started to really, 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 really respond to her and the way she was portraying her paladin. It could be a sword, it could be a favoured little trinket that hangs around the character's neck. How many movies have we seen where it is the necklace of my mother that I was given on her deathbed and I can't lose it, it was the ring that I, my bride gave to me before she was turned into mincemeat by a combine harvester, all those kind of wonderful things. All of that just creates wonderful, wonderful character. Now, the benefit that that has is that the GM can now take that away from your character, which can cause your character to go into panic. They must get it back because, well, it's their thing. The most classic example, of course, is poor old Smeagol. He had a little item of jewellery stolen from him and he ended up dying because, well, the GM just never gave him the opportunity of getting it back. So the idea behind the object is that it creates something that the party can buy into, as well as your character. And if you make sure that your character is really attached to it, it becomes a thing. The last type of quirk that you can really bring into this whole thing is some kind of neurosis, some kind of action that your character always takes. This is a very powerful visual component, so you have to be sure to describe it very, very clearly, and describe it in the same way each time so that it reinforces that visual image. And that is the action that a character can take before they do something. So the action might be, as a classic example, before a battle, they kneel, they take up a handful of soil, which they hold tightly in their fist. They close their eyes for a moment, find their inner calm, and then stand, allowing the sand to slowly drain out from between their fingers. And then they launch into combat. It could be something as simple as they touch their bent finger to the middle of their forehead, gather their thoughts, and then are prepared. Something as simple as turns twice before he goes to bed. They don't have to always be around combat. Always does two rotations around the place he's going to sleep before he settles down for the night. Always taps twice on the side of the starship before they leave the starship in the hangar bay as a sign of good luck. Those actions, if you describe them well enough and if you do them often enough, start to entrench themselves, as do all of the other quirks, and they start to make themselves something that the players begin to expect. So you've got verbal quirks, you've got um, 
item quirks and you've got action quirks that can really, really reinforce. You don't want a character, though, who's got a verbal quirk, an item quirk, and an action quirk. That's a neurotic character. And, of course, we don't want every single party member to have a little something, but they always, and they could. And it can be a subtle, very, very subtle thing, like my character's always the one who sets up the camp. And they always set it up with the beds facing north, east, south, and west. And that's the thing that they do. That is their thing, setting up camp. And if somebody else does it, they get very upset about it because it's their role, their responsibility. Something as simple as that, if you repeat it often enough, it starts to become part of the character. And all that that does is that makes that character that much more real. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that if you do it correctly, if you entrench it enough, but you don't overplay it because otherwise it becomes irritating, don't do it too often, people will remember it. And in 10 years' time, they'll say, oh, what was that name of that paladin? I don't remember her name, but remember she used to have those fighting leathers. That was amazing. I loved that. That was so cool. Forget the campaign. Forget the monsters. Forget the adventures. Forget the name of the player's character. But the action, the quirk, was what kept coming back to the memories of all of us who played that particular day with Karen. So it is something to think about in adding to your arsenal as a role player, the idea of quirks. You can do physical ticks and twists and things, but they do become very tiresome after a while. And some people actually have those in real life, unfortunately. And so it can come across as being a little bit... Um, perhaps in bad taste, even if it isn't in bad taste, if it's done with the best of intentions. But it primarily is because if you want to have a wink that keeps going, it becomes very problematic to sustain it. And again, that's the quick, that's the trick about quirks, or it's the quick about Turks. The trick about quirks is that you need to repeat them every session so that the players start to anticipate them coming up and then they will work for you well i hope that this has been helpful in terms of developing your character just that much more and uh, we look forward to seeing your comments below what quirks have you come up with for characters that you've built that have remained with you after days months years weeks centuries of role playing and that you can still remember fondly until next time, you can join us on Twitter, hashtag HowToGM. Yes, I know, HowToGM. But we have all sorts of conversations there. You can join us on www.greatgamemaster.com, where we have even more uh, things going on. There's the Facebook page. All the social media is there for you to, to jump right in and join those conversations. But until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of playing.